Good morning. My name is Sue King. I'm the pastor of the United Methodist Churches in Big Sandy, Montana, Chester, Montana, and at Van Orsdale United Methodist Church in Haver, Montana. So glad you have joined us for worship this morning. If you are watching via Facebook, we invite you to like us and to please comment during the sermon um, what you like and what touches your heart. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord leads me beside still waters, restores my life, leads me in right paths for the sake of the Lord's name. The darkest valley I fear no evil for you are with me your rod and your staff they comfort me the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want you prepare a table of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell I uh, would like to invite you to hear this scripture this morning. This is from the sixth chapter of Mark. It's verses 30 to 34 and then 53 to 56. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him that all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, now come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in a boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived there ahead of the disciples. And Jesus went ashore, and he saw the great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. When they had all crossed over the Sea of Galilee, they came to the land at Gennesaret, and they moored the boat. And when they had gotten out of the boat, people at once recognized Jesus, and they rushed about that whole region. And they began to bring the sick on mats to wherever that they heard he was. And wherever he went into villages, or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplace and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak and all who touched it were healed. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Now, the Gospel of Mark is fast-paced. In fact, you can even read it in one sitting if you sit down for a bit, and it's full of action. Listen to these phrases. Many were coming and going. They had no leisure even to eat. The people hurried there on foot from all of the towns. People rushed about that whole region. Wherever Jesus went, they laid the sick. Now imagine that scene. The crowds of people and sick people laying on mats alongside of the roads and the footpaths, voices calling out, hands stretched out to touch the fringe of Jesus' cloak as he brushed by. I can imagine him almost never stopping as he was walking through the crowds if they were able to be healed by touching the fringe of his cloak. Now the disciples had done a great job, hadn't they? Do you remember they had been sent out by Jesus two by two into the small towns and the villages and the farms, preaching the good news, and they were charged with healing people. People wanted to know more about this Jesus that these disciples followed. Now, whenever the disciples went went somewhere, they were recognized. And Jesus could see that they all needed to rest. They just needed a little time to eat without interruption. And so he arranged a boat trip across the lake, uh, the lake uh, Sea of Galilee, far from the, from the crowds. But the urgency of the crowds prevails. It always does, doesn't it? This week has been very busy for many of you, preparing for the Great Northern Fair, preparing for another 50th wedding anniversary or family gathering, traveling for family gatherings, school reunions, visiting people who are in the hospitals, taking children to interstate sports competitions, getting ready for the senior camp at Flathead Lake, mowing lawns, painting walls, fixing community meals, each one of us is going to work each day. Whatever our work looks like for you or for me, whether it's paid or volunteer or some combination of the two. Does this ever happen to you? Sometimes I feel myself rushing hither and yon, and I wonder what I ought to be doing next. And sometimes I even question, what am I doing right now? Is that really the best use of my time? And shouldn't I be doing something else? but I don't have time to stop and really think about it. I need to keep moving. <sighs> Anxious, a little overwhelmed sometimes. Let's face it, the rush of adrenaline from working hard and long hours, it can become a habit. Along with caffeine and adrenaline, it's the drug of choice for a lot of competent people. It makes us feel like we're doing something that matters. And yet, even though I'm going to say that we should never stop being competent, hardworking, highly engaged people, because Lord knows we need to have people like that in our world, but the Lord also knows that we need to take a break sometimes. We need to take a rest. And Jesus always modeled that for us, didn't he? He wants us to rest, and he wants us to play in green pastures. He wants us to restore our souls. Now, for heaven's sakes, if you are in a busy season of life, a new job, a new family member, or bringing in the harvest, please, I'm not talking to you. Do not beat yourself up. We can see that even the Lord's plans for a vacation can get sidelined by the needs of the world. We need to take care of the crops. We need to take care of our children and our parents. There's just no, that's, that's part of being who we are as God's people. And yet, Jesus postponed his plans for recreation when he saw the needs of people around him. He responded with great compassion, didn't he? And he addressed their needs. He, and yet, at the same time, he persistently models for us the need to get away, to get into the wilderness, to have some quiet time, even if he has to stay up late at night or get up super early in the morning. He knows that we need time in nature. We need to sit in our favorite chair where it's quiet with a cup of coffee in the morning and just give thanks for the home that we have and the life that we have and the world that we live in. 
Frequently in the Gospels, we see Jesus seeking that time away. Or we see Jesus kicking back with his family and his friends and enjoying a meal together, probably had music and conversation, maybe even dancing. He was taking a break from feeding the crowds and healing the sick because Jesus needed a rest too. And as we have learned, gathering together is healing in itself, isn't it? For the last 18 months, we have rightfully isolated from each other to try to reduce the spread of the coronavirus. But that isolation has had its own costs too, although it was very important that we did it. Our mental and physical health has had a toll taken on it. We do still need to be cautious, especially as the virus and especially as new variants seem to be taking hold among the populations of people who are unvaccinated. As much as we are relieved to be together again in our churches and in our family gatherings and in our community gatherings, let's not abandon our compassion and our care for each other at this time either. We cannot forget those who have that we have lost, and we cannot forget that there are many who are mourning the loss of their loved ones. We must remember that this pandemic is far from over. I want to draw attention to the fact of this June report of the John Hopkins University that states that even with a donation from wealthy countries to poor countries of about a billion vaccines, the world is still six billion vaccines short of what we need. In fact, many parts of the world are not going to be vaccinated for at least a full two years. The entire end of 2023 will be the soonest that we can get everyone vaccinated at the rates that we're going. We are short and we need to be paying attention to this. When I think about this and this Bible story today, I think of the scene that we have today of people who are not yet vaccinated, who want a vaccine in other parts of the world, but they can't get one. They are like the sheep without a shepherd who lacks someone who cares about their well-being. How will Christ's compassion be present in today's reality? Well, how might we do our part as United Methodists and people in our communities to increase the availability of vaccinations in our communities and in our world? I decided to do some homework and look for information on the website of the United Methodist Church under the Global Ministries section. Our denomination's campaign called Abundant Health was launched in 2016 and it promotes mental, spiritual, and emotional well-being. So talking about COVID-19 fulfills all three of these areas. Kathleen Griffin is a global health team lead and a senior technical advisor at the General Board of Global Ministries. She says this, when you're protecting yourself with the vaccine, you're also protecting your community. And when you're helping people who are without access to knowledge about the vaccine and without access to the vaccine itself, well, that's part of the mission. That's part of loving your neighbor. She goes on to say, we want to help people understand that these vaccine, vaccines are proven to be successful and they are already decreasing the spread of COVID-19. By giving people information, we want to empower them to make decisions for themselves, for their families, for their congregations, and for their communities, says Griffith. She goes on and she recognizes, as we all do, I think, that COVID is affecting the entire world. And those who are most lacking in vaccinations are marginalized communities, especially people of color. In April of, t of this year, the World Health Organization said that less than 2% of the, at that time, 690 million COVID vaccine, vaccine doses that had been administered by that date were in Africa. 2%, that's 
that's not very much for a very highly populated continent. Limited stock and supply bottlenecks impede fair access to vaccines. So currently, what is the United Methodist Church doing? Well, Dr. Damas Lushima is a healthcare coordinator in the Church of the East Congo United Methodist Church. There, the vaccination is starting to be spread uh, among healthcare individuals, health professionals, older adults, and people suffering from chronic diseases. They're at the very beginnings of the vaccination stages, aren't they? Now, whether it's in our community or whether it's in another community far away, there are still barriers to getting people vaccinated. So what can we do about that? Well, for some people, they don't have the ability to take off work to go get the vaccination. And others are having difficulty getting transportation to a vaccination site. I know of one homebound elderly woman who wanted to return to her church. She was one of the last people who had not yet been vaccinated. However, she was prevented from getting her vaccine by her long-term in-home caregiver who refused to take her to get a vaccine and threatened to quit if she got vaccinated. Now a church member heard of her situation and quietly took the woman to get her vaccine. You know, mistrust of vaccination goes back to several decades and it is unwarranted, but it continues to keep some people from getting vaccinated. And there's also a lack of accurate and trusted vac uh, information for some people regarding the COVID vaccines themselves. For example, the COVID vaccine does not have microchips in it states Griffith from the General Board of Global Ministries. I think it's only those websites that are rabbit holes that we can get sucked into that have that kind of information on them. But the truth is just getting our own vaccination, that's not enough, is it? Here's the three things that our United Methodist churches can still do. And I invite you all to do a huddle together after church. Maybe you're part of a mission team. Maybe you're just interested in this. Maybe you have some information to share. And if you're online, please use our chat to, or our email to uh, tell us what you know, because there's ways that you can help. First of all, churches can maintain a list of places where you can get an immunization, where you can get the vaccine. You know, somebody who's new to a community like me doesn't know where the medical care centers are. And if they haven't gotten their vaccine yet and they want to get involved in their community, they need to know where to go. People often come to churches to get that kind of help. So if you know where someone can get a vaccination, please email our church, um, our churches and let us know. So if you have knowledge, you can help. Secondly, you could offer to provide a ride to someone who needs a ride. And the question is, do you have a little bit of time and do you have a vehicle? And thirdly, you could make a gift to the United Methodist Committee on Relief that does worldwide COVID-19 response. There's an advanced special number that's printed in your bulletin or it's also going to be on the online worship service, 302-2612 on your check will help get vaccinations to people in other countries too. That number goes in the memo line and the name of a United Methodist Church would go in the uh, two line. So sometimes in life we do need to take a pause, don't we? We need to look around and see our neighbors in other places. And we need to look at what's happening around us with the eyes of Jesus. Will you pray with me? God, we thank you for your compassion and your care for us and for all people. You know, summertime is such a gift to us here with beautiful, bountiful fields and forests. And it's such a joy to see one another again and worship you together today. We remember all those who cannot join us today and we ask your comfort and healing presence near them. We pray for the sick, the dying ones, 
and the homeless ones and those who are without hope today. Help us care for all your people as Jesus did. In each day, help us to work hard and play hard. Help us to get good rest and spend daily time with you, God, in nature's beauty. Teach us how to live when we are busy or at rest. May we be never too tired or preoccupied to look around with the eyes of Jesus at our brothers and sisters and siblings around the world. And above all, God, grant us the compassion of our shepherd and savior, Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, my friends, may the God of peace, the great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything that good that you may do God's will and work for what is pleasing to God through Jesus Christ, to whom we give all glory forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>